Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Mahan Field in Natick, Massachusetts. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland, HCAM Television in Hopkinton, and it is the second game of the season for the 1 and 0 Ashland Post 77, as today they are the visitors to Natick, who is playing their first game of the season as we are ready for baseball here in Natick. The shortstop Jackson Hornung steps in and takes a strike. And the count is 0 and 1. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call for this one. Todd Carter is our cameraman from WACA TV as their strike two. Jackson Hornung at the plate right now. He is out of Ashland High School. And we'll take a look at the post 77 lineup in just a moment. As there's another strike. And there's one away for post 77. That'll bring up Ronan Bates, the first baseman, also out of Ashland High School. Let's take a look at the rest of the lineup. Jake Obed, the left fielder, batting third. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, in the cleanup spot. Brad Seymour, the center fielder, batting fifth. Wind up and the pitch. Fastball down low. 1-0. Lewis Rossi is the third baseman batting six. Trevor DePera on the second baseman batting seventh. Zach Pess in the pitcher batting eighth. And Sean Jouette, the catcher, hitting ninth. That one's fouled away. One and one. Sean Harney is the pitcher for Natick. Jacob Stone, the catcher at first base. It's Aiden Medigan. Second base is Austin Twist. The shortstop is Noah Jusek. The windup and the pitch in there for a strike. That'll make the count one and two. Excuse me, that is Noah Joseph. At third base, it is Kennedy Wilson. From left to right, it's Max Ferrucci, Jackson Dobeck, and Colin Chalani for Natick. As the windup and the pitch, up the middle it goes, gloved by the shortstop, throw to first. Six to three for the second out. I'll bring up Jake Obed, the left fielder. Beautiful night for baseball. Temperatures in the high 80s, partly cloudy. A lot of humidity, however. There's strike one. And for those of you that watch the Hillers baseball coverage and softball on HCAM, of course, you'll recognize my voice, but of course, I uh, brought my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad, for Ashland Legion Baseball as well. One and one is the count on Obit. Nadix pitcher has got a sneaky fastball. Yeah. Kind of slings it up there. That one upstairs, two and one. That's fouled away, two and two. Ashland won their first game of the very young season yesterday on the road in Hudson. 10 to nothing was the final score on that one. Up the middle it goes, right back to the pitcher. One to three, four, the third out, and we'll go down one, two, three in the top of the first to the bottom of the first we go. You are watching Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA and HCAM. Welcome back to Natick as we enter the bottom half of the first. Natick post 107 coming to the plate for their first time this season in just a bit. Ashland Legion is led by head coach Derek Johnson and general manager in his 21st season, Richard Powell. He's done a great job with this Ashland Legion program, assisted by Andrew Keim and the Legion assistant is Nick Marscatola. As we are ready for Natick to come to the plate, let's take a look at their lineup. The center fielder is Jackson Dobeck. He's leading off. Left field, Max Ferrucci batting second. Jacob Stone, the catcher, batting third. Kennedy Wilson, the third baseman in the cleanup role. Sean Harney, the pitcher, batting fifth. Noah Joseph, the shortstop, batting sixth. As Zach Pesson, the Ashland pitcher, set to deliver. There's a strike. 
Austin Twist, the second baseman, batting seventh. Aiden Medigan, the first baseman, batting eighth. Colin Shalani, the right fielder, rounding out the order for post 107. That one down low, one and one. Speaking with the pitcher, Hessen, before the game, um, features a fastball, curveball, and occasionally he'll drop in a changeup. As this is hit in the air to right field, and it is gloved by Ben Thomas for the first out. Let's take a look at the Ashland Diamond. It is Zach Pesson, the pitcher, Sean Jouet behind the plate. First base, Ronan Bates, Trevor DePera on the second baseman. Jackson Hornung, the shortstop, Louis Rossi at third base. From left to right, Jake Obed, Brad Seymour, and Ben Thomas. The pitch just high. It's our fourth season of Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV and H Camp. That one down low, two and oh. Peston's more of an over three quarter, over the top pitcher versus the uh, contrast of the Natick pitcher, who's sort of a slingshot pitcher. Leg lift and the pitch. There's a strike. Zach Pesson is one of the 10 members of Post 77 that are at a Holliston High School. As the to-be senior delivers that one inside, three and one. He's a five foot 11, 160 pound hurler. Pretty good fastball, as you mentioned, Larry. As that one is hit in the air, foul out of play, full count. Beautiful field we're at today. Yeah, very nice field. Nice dimensions. That one's fouled away. The team manager for Natick is James Tomasetti. They certainly have a nice uh, facility to play out here. That one just upstairs. And that is going to draw the walk. I'll bring up Jacob Stone, the catcher, one out, one on. Well, we got some action on the bases. We'll see uh, how big of a lead he gets off passing. Got three shuffle steps. Backs Pe off the rubber. Passing from the stretch, takes a peek at first. That one down low, and that got briefly by the catcher, and the runner advances. Wild pitch allows Ferrucci to go to second base. From the stretches, Besson, runner in scoring position. That one just outside. Lights coming on here at Mahan Field on this beautiful Tuesday night. Leg lift and the pitch hit in the air, a high fly ball on the right side. Second baseman ranging over, he will make the catch. Two away, as Trevor DePeron had to cover a lot of ground to get to that one. Runner stays put at second, that'll bring up Kennedy Wilson, the third baseman. Second baseman went at full speed out to right with the right field. It was hard charging, there was no collision, but second baseman took control. This is up the left side. That'll drop in for a base hit. Runner around third, he'll score easily. And the left fielder having trouble getting to the ball. Obed finally able to get to it and throws it in. And it is an RBI double for Wilson. One nothing, Natick. We're gonna bring up Sean Harney. Good piece of hitting there, Larry. Yeah, killed some worms and gophers, but grabbed some chalk as well. And they do have the dimensions posted of the field. 325 out to left, 334 out to center. To right center, it's 362. That's the deepest part of the ballpark, because that one's fouled away. 346 out to right field. 
not too much different than the Ashland field, which is 360 to dead center. That one is low. I think Pesson wanted that curveball, but the umpire decided not to give it to him. Yeah, close call there. Runner leading off of second. Leg lift and the pitch. Down in the dirt. Pesson working from the stretch. Runner leading off of second. He deals to the lefty, and it's up the right side and off the second baseman, and he is going to have no play. Runners on the corners. And that was a tough ball to play. It took a hop right in front of the second baseman. We'll have to see uh, what the official uh, scorekeeper put that one as, but I'll put it at as a single. Very generous. Yeah, second little, baseman was trying generous. to read the hop. Yep. Noah Joseph takes a strike on the outside corner. Runner takes off from first. And the speedy Harney is at second base with the stolen bag. It's tough to read hops when you're on an opposing field. A little different than when you're in the home field. The Owen pitch grabs the outer corner, 0-2. Waits the sign and deals. Up the middle it goes, and it is gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first, he's got him. And that will do it for the bottom of the first. And Natick does play to run. It's 1-0 heading to the second. Top half of the second inning. Natick leading Ashland to 1-0 as the cleanup hitter, Ben Thomas, the right fielder, steps in the batter's box. He is set to face Sean Harney. Blazes a fastball right by him, a swinging strike. Ben Thomas out of Holliston High School. Their high school team went eight and 12 this season. Swinging strike. I was watching them take infield practice. I'm talking about Nadick. And both the shortstop and the second baseman took their balls for double play at the outfield side of the bag. So if Ashland was watching the infield, that's their tendency. So if they happen to have a slide situation, they should go towards the outfield side of the bag to break up a double play. That one just low. Some good advice there. Maybe on the rebroadcast, the uh, Ashland manager will there's a strike, got him looking. One away. Have the boys watch the other team take infield. Brad Seymour will step in. Seymour hit a 275 during the high school season for Holliston. Drove in 10 runs. Tips that one, 0 and 1. The umpire's gonna get some professional courtesy sure whether he got his bell rung or. And having a chat with the catcher and the pitcher. What was that about Larry, you think? I think he uh, got hit with a foul tip. Native Needed catcher a minute. Decides, native catcher gave him the courtesy knowing he got hit to go out to the mound and give the umpire a little time to uh, collect his thoughts. That's what you call uh, good sportsmanship there. There's a strike, 0 and 2. It's reciprocal. The umpire knows the catcher got rung up. He'll go out and talk to the pitcher. And that is fouled away. Quickly uh, losing the sun here at Mahan Field, but the lights coming on. Some night baseball 
for post 77. They'll have their home opener tomorrow as there is strike three on Seymour. It's the third strikeout of the game for Sean Harney. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, will step in. That one inside, 1-0. One oh. He doesn't take the ball out of the glove to the very last minute, plus he comes at you from a kind of a strange angle, so it may be difficult for these Ashland players to get through once. No one fouled away. One one, just inside. Set to deliver. Another one called inside. Three and one. He deals. That one's low, Rossi draws the walk. And I'll bring up Trevor to Perron. Second baseman out of Ashland High School. That one inside, one and oh on to Perron. Harney takes a look at first and now is set to deal. Now inside. Rossi's, Rossi, it's a, easy for me to say. Rossi is not getting a particularly large lead. Two little pitch in there for a strike. Set to deliver, and this is going to take a couple hops on the right side, briefly bobbled by the first baseman, but he's able to gather it up and step on the bag for the unassisted ground out. That will wrap up the top of the second. one nothing Natick as we head to the bottom of the inning. Bottom of the second inning. one nothing lead for Natick. Due up this inning is the seven, eight, and nine hitters to face Zach Pess and Austin Twist, the second baseman, Aiden Medigan, the first baseman, and Colin Shalani, the right fielder. Leg lift and the pitch in there for strike. The 0 1 pitch. That one low in the dirt, 1 and 1. Those of you just joining us, you're watching Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM in Hopkinton. That one a ball. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. Todd Carter, our cameraman this evening. As this is lined up the right side and caught right to the glove of DePerrin for the first out of the inning. Aiden Medigan will step in. That was a line drive. That was hit right on the screws. There's strike one. I see a couple of familiar faces from the Ashland High School. Ronan Bates at first base, was the third baseman this year. And Jackson Horning was the starting shortstop for Ashland High. One and one. You'll find that Coach Derek Johnson likes to move players around, so you'll likely see a few of these players in multiple positions this year as that one's down low. Now 
first baseman's glove, uh, you know, can't buy at the five and 10 cent store anymore. Swinging strike. Almost lost his footing there, two and two. Didn't get cheated on that. Wind up and the pitch, and this is a little bloop shot over the reach of the pitcher on the infield grass. Glove by the shortstop, almost had the play, but not in time, a single for Medigan. And that is a rare infield hit, rare clean infield hit. Nice hustle by Jewett, trailing that runner down to first base. You'll know a catcher that likes to catch if he gets that workout from home plate to first base. Jelani steps in, the right fielder. Pesson's yet to pick over. Checking at first, almost got him. That was mental telepathy. Got a decent move. From the stretch, check in once again. Runner back safe. Yeah, very nice move for Pesson. Fouled away. Pesson will check in once again, runner back safe. That was more than a I know you're there pick, but he's only got a two and a half length shuffle step. And this is up the third base side, gloved by the third baseman, throw to first, they got him. Runner does advance to second, but it is a five to three out, two away. And that'll bring up Jackson Dobeck, the center fielder. Zach Pesson uh, got seven appearances for Holliston High School on the mound, but only pitched two and two thirds of an inning. 13 12 ERA, according to the Max Prep stats. Quite interesting. Seven appearances in 2.2 innings. This is hit in the air to right field, and it is caught. For the third out of the inning, no problem for Ben Thomas. And that will wrap up the bottom of the second to the third we go. Natick leading Ashland one to nothing. Top half of the third inning, post 77 coming back up to the plate. Trailing one to nothing. Leading things off is Zach Pesson, the pitcher. And that one just outside, 1-0. Oh. 8-9-1 and one for Ashland. Zach Pesson, Sean Jewett, the catcher. And Jackson Horning, the shortstop, as this one's hit into right center. That'll drop down for a base hit. A leadoff single for Pesson. Pesson shot a gap there. No chance for either the right fielder or the center fielder to get to it. Sean Jewett to step in. Runner going to lead off of first a bit. Sean Jouette, a catcher and an outfielder out of Holliston, takes strike one. A lot of Holliston players this season on the Ashland roster, 10 out of Holliston. This is lined up the right side, gloved on the deep infield dirt by the second baseman, he'll have the out at first. What's the rule on pinch running, Tom, at Legion Ball? Uh, I believe they can pinch run. I, I believe it's the same as actually uh, uh, college or Major League Baseball that you can't uh, bring a player back into the game if you pinch run for them, but not 100% on that. That one outside, 1-0. And the thing about Legion ball is all zones have different rules. 
but I believe uh, it's not like high school where you could just pinch run for a guy and bring someone in. Looks like both the second baseman and the shortstop are uh, making their uh, selves known. That one's low. Maybe talking a little bit or kicking some dirt at his feet. Slapping the glove. 3-0 pitch. There's a strike. Corning struck out his last time up. There's another strike that'll fill up the count. Good, good size for a shortstop, 6'1", 185. And we'll have time called by the hitter. Just shaking off that leg a little bit, his left leg. And he will foul this one away off the light pole. He did charge a ground ball pretty hard and threw off one, one leg. Didn't get the runner. Not sure whether he injured himself on that play. Ashland High School went 14 and eight this season. They're towards the top of the TVL. Gets a piece of this one into left center, and the shortstop will range over to make the catch throw to second. And the second baseman dropped it. It would have been a double play, as it was a beauty of a catch by the shortstop. But the second baseman could not hold on. So it'll be Pesson over at second, two outs, and Ronan Bates to the plate. I thought I heard funeral music out there with him that far off the bag. As this is up the left side, another great play by the shortstop. Throw to first, takes a hop, and it will not get there in time. Everybody's safe. Passing up to third, Bates to first on the single. Noah Joseph, the shortstop, certainly being kept busy. And he made a nice play making that last catch on the line out, line out and made a nice play getting to that ball, but just could not get the throw off with the power that he wanted as Jake Obed steps in. The first baseman was playing behind Ronan Bates. Now the coach uh, implores him to hold him. We'll see whether there's a play on here. Swinging strike. And the pitcher stepped off the mound, took a look at third, and they're trying to catch the runner at first in a pickle. And that was clearly a uh, designed play by Ashland to try to get the runner from third to score. But he does get back to the bag safely. And that's good heads up baseball by the Natick defense as they knew what was going on there. Smart move by the pitcher getting it to an infielder. Pitcher should never be in a rundown situation. And the runner at third, Peston taking a big lead. And now they're going to catch him in the pickle. They're going to throw home. And the throw is high. The run will score. And now Bates is going to head to third. And he will reach third safely. So the pickle will pay off for post 77. It's one to one. So what's the old adage, Tom? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Yep. So you got a error there on the throw home. And I don't know, you credit him with the steal home on that as well? I think so. Or is it just an error? That's well, it was an E6 on the throw. Right. We'll have to uh, get the official scorebook on that one. But I got an E6 in there and a stolen base, which will be credited to someone, either Bates or Pesson, as there's a strike. I would give the stolen base to uh, Ronan Bates. He induced that hole. 
crazy situation. Right, that's what I was thinking. That one fouled away, 0-2. So it's now a tie ball game here in the top of the third, one to one. Obid still at the plate, trying to drive in another run. That one upstairs. I'll make the count one and two on Obid, who is in his third season of Ashland Legion Baseball. Swinging strike there, and that'll do it for the top of the third. But Ashland does play to run. It is one to one as we head to the bottom of the inning. Bottom of the third inning, a one to one ball game. Two, three, and four due up for Natick Post 107 to face Zach Pesson. Max Ferrucci, the left fielder. Jacob Stone, the catcher. Kennedy Wilson, the third baseman. Nice to see Dylan O'Leary from the Hogpenton Hillers uh, playing summer ball with the uh, Ashland 77. He'll certainly be a uh, very useful player for this team as that one is in the dirt. Tom Monsey, who will be with the team starting on the 17th as he is finishing up at college for the year. That one up in there for a strike. I think he was majoring in basket weaving wherever he went. And of course, Dylan O'Leary, who played with the Hillers this year, as that one's fouled away, one and two. Played a nice third base this year. I think we were a little spoiled watching the catcher position uh, down at Hopkinton. I'm no noticing the native catcher uh, Swinging strike there, out number one. I'll bring up Jacob Stone. We watched a lot of good blocking and receiving this spring in between the raindrops. Yeah, certainly uh, active uh, spring as far as rain as there's a strike. Spring starts in, uh, on Wednesday but you'd never know it from all the rain we had. Right. Just lost the whole spring. Yeah, I think it's going uh, right into summer pretty much, especially uh, based on the temperatures that we've had these last few days. It's starting to cool down now. Started off 89 degrees. Now we're down to the lower 80s. That one upstairs. It was always a tough part of the uh, night when it's dusk for the outfielders. Wind up and the pitch inside. I think Pesson wanted that pitch. It looked like it was right down Broadway, but the umpire does, doesn't agree with me. The 2 2 pitch. Upstairs, and he'll draw the walk. Excuse me, that was a 3 2 pitch. And Stone is aboard. One out, one on. The Natick High School Red Hawks. Went five and 15 this season. The majority of players on this Natick team are from that Natick Red Hawks team. Wind up and the pitch. Up the middle on the ground. Glove by the pitcher. Throw to second for one. And throw to first, not in time. So they get Stone on the one to four force out. Good pivot by Rossi. Almost had the base runner. Just in by half a step. And there's two away. That'll bring up Sean Harney. Right up in the pitch runner taking off from first. The throw up is going to be off the mark. A stolen bag for Wilson. Looks like Boston based New Balance is. Uh, Got their market share for cleats. Line up down the pitch, hit in the air, over to left center. This one is hit deep towards the fence. That's going to drop in for a base hit, and a run's going to score for Natick. Two to one on the RBI double from the pitcher, helping his own cause. So 
two outs, a run in. Nadek has reclaimed the lead. That'll bring up Noah Joseph. As there's a strike. With two out, the Nadek uh, base runner read that all the way, off on contact, and that's why he scored from first base. As this has popped up in a shallow right field, could be trouble. Nice catch by Thomas, had to come to a dive. But Ben Thomas able to reel it in for the third out, but not before Nadek plates a run. It is two to one Nadek as we head to the fourth. Top of the fourth inning, four, five, and six, two up for post 77. Ben Thomas, the right fielder, Brad Seymour, the center fielder, and Lewis Rossi, the third baseman. As Thomas will step in, made a nice catch in right field to wrap up the bottom of the third. But Nadick did play to run, it's a two to one ball game. And Sean Harney, who drove in the go ahead run out there to pitch for his fourth inning of work. There's a strike. That one is just outside. Arnie hasn't shaken off a pitch yet from his catcher. Leg lift and the pitch upstairs. Two and one. Ashland scored their only run in the top half of the third. That one inside. Zach Pesson coming around to score on a great base running play. That one upstairs got away from the catcher and that'll bring the runner up to first. Wild pitcher pass ball on that, Tom. I would say uh, wild pitch because it was really high. But it's questionable because it didn't really have much movement. It was kind of straight out there, but it was pretty high. At least in my opinion. You're really easy. Brad Seymour steps in. But you know what? The catcher probably should have had it. Let's give it both. <laughs> PBWP? I like it. Okay. There's a strike to Seymour. Well, pitcher looking over, turns his shoulder a couple times. Now he's in the set. Brad Seymour out of Halston takes the ball there. Set to deliver. Inside, little chin music. Righty awaits the pitch. Warm up activity in the Natick bullpen. Left hander. Three and one to count now. Is that one a ball? And Looks like Hayden Scully over there getting loose for Natick. That one fouled away and that hit the hitter on deck, Lewis Rossi, right in the ankle. He shakes it off, seems to be okay. Beautiful place here at Mahan Field. Some real dugouts, which you don't see in a lot of uh, these ballparks. That one's fouled away, count will remain full. Good battle going on here. Didn't they install new dugouts at Ashland Middle School? I don't know, I haven't been there yet to take a look. If they did, it's news to me. Well, Ben Thomas is crossing his feet, which is kind of a no-no in taking the lead. Up the right side, glove by the first baseman, and he will get the unassisted. Runner does advance the second. Ben Thomas was uh, ripe for a pickoff move. Should the native pitcher want to throw over when you're crossing your feet? 
it's almost impossible to get back to the bag. So Thomas advances to second, one out. Lewis Rossi, the third baseman to the plate. Shortstop Brunetic has been playing about a foot and a half back on the uh, on the grass and then coming in. And There's a bunt. Up the middle, over to first, and they got him. They did advance the runner to third, which was the goal of that bunt. One to three on the out, two away. Thomas to third. Trevor DePera on the second baseman to the plate. DePera at Ashland, a five foot five, 148 pounder, can play second base, shortstop. Member of the class of 2018, graduate after next year as there's a strike. As this is up the middle, gloved at short, throw to first, they got him. Six to three for the third and a final out. And that will wrap up the top of the fourth. To the bottom of the inning we go. Natick leading Ashland two to one. Bottom of the fourth inning. Natick post 107 coming up to the plate. Seven, eight, and nine do up. Austin Twist, the second baseman, will start things off. Followed by Aiden Medigan, the first baseman. And Colin Chalani, the right fielder. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklett on the broadcast to bring you Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland and H Camp Television in Hopkinton. Wind up and the pitch. That one upstairs, 1 0. As this is up the right side on the ground, gloved by the second baseman. A little throw over to first, not a problem. 4 to 3 goes twist. One away, and that'll bring up Aiden Medigan. That ball was hard hit, but unlike in the first inning, he was able to read the ball off the bat, not have anything bad happen. Stepping in now is Medigan, the first baseman. That one down low, one and up. Heston waits the sign. There's a strike. One and one. He deals. Fouled away. Wind up and the pitch, and that one fouled away. I believe it got him in the batter's box, so no harm, no foul. Set to deal. Upstairs. Two and two. Leg lift and the pitch hit in the air, right side in foul territory and out of play. Count remains two and two. Dylan O'Leary's tomorrow's starter, responsible for shagging balls on the right field line. Line up and the pitch, breaking pitch, got him. Nasty movement on that one. Two away, and that'll bring up Chelani. Nice when you get a hitter admiring the artwork at the museum. Getting caught looking. Inside, 1-0. Oh. Right up and the pitch, swinging strike. 
And there's nothing that a pitcher likes more than a backwards K in the book. That'll bring a smile to his face every time. He deals. That one low. Seems like as the game goes on, Pesson just getting stronger and stronger out there. Well, there's no warm-up activity in the bullpen. Over to the left side, glove by the third baseman, not a problem. Five to three goes Chelani, one, two, three goes Natick, and we will head to the top half of the fifth. Natick two, Ashland one. It's Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA and HKM. Top half of the fifth inning, eight, nine, and one due up for post 77. Zach Pesson, Sean Jewett, and Jackson Horning. To face Sean Harney. Harney deals upstairs. Well, Zach Pesson ordinarily plays first base, and Ronan Bates plays third base. He's filling in very nicely tonight as the hurler. Certainly is. Pitched a one, two, three inning in the bottom of the fourth. Up the right side, glove by the second baseman, throw to first, not a problem. Four to three for the first out. Sean Jewett, the catcher to the plate. Line up and the pitch, fouled away. 0-1. Oh, Sean Jewett, 5'9", 160 pounds out of Holliston. Good eye there, 1-1. One and, one. and he will be a junior next year. Take strike two there. Looks like the bugs are bothering the pitcher a little bit. He swatted at a couple. Line up and the pitch. Up the middle it goes. Gloved by the shortstop. Throw to first. They got him. Two way. I'll bring up Jackson Horning. Shortstop. He's 0 for 2 so far today. Just a sophomore this year. He's got a couple more years before he gets the cap and gown. But he is a slick player. 419 batting average during the high school season. Follows that one away, 0-1. Played in all 20 games of the regular season. Scored 27 runs for the Clockers. There's strike two. Nice breaking pitch. Wind up and the pitch. Hit in the air, a high fly ball, right side, foul territory, and out of play. Jackson played several years with the Northeast Longhorns under the tutelage of Matt Anderson. Check swing, couldn't hold, and that is the third out of the top of the fifth. We head to the bottom of the fifth and what has turned into a bit of a pitcher's duel between Natick and Ashland. Post 107 leading Ashland two to one. Bottom of the fifth inning, top of the order for Natick. Jackson Dobeck, the center fielder, Max Ferrucci, the left fielder, Jacob Stone, the catcher. Pesson deals, and a breaking pitch grabs the inside corner. 0-1. Oh Good movement on his breaking pitches. He deals up the left side, and it is dropped by the shortstop. Dobek reaches on the error. Second error of the game for post-77. 
usually the base runner on a, on a hit like that will break down and take about three three steps past the bag and let turn over our way to the right to see if there's an overthrow so he can go to second, but he went halfway down the right field line. Max Ferrucci steps in. That's actually the first error of the game for Ashland. And the runner going to take off from first, he will reach second safely on the stolen bag. Each team has committed one error in this game. If Zach had just taken a little bit of a peek, he could have thrown over. He's got a very good move. You know, one pitch, the bunt up the left side, and no play for Bates. Everybody's safe. Go back to third for Rucci, reaches. And no one covering first when Bates looked over. I'll bring up Jacob Stone, the catcher. Two on, no outs. Pesson set to deal from the stretch. The sign going to come in to put a play on. And he will hit the batter. That'll load up the bases. That was the play. Force everywhere now. So now base is juiced with no outs, and Coach Johnson going to come out and have a chat with his pitcher, Pesson. And Bates also over there, as well as the catcher, Sean Jewett. And we'll see if he takes the baseball. And it appears it'll just be a chat. Dylan O'Leary running down in the bullpen. See, uh, yeah, they're gonna give O'Leary some time to get down there, I think, and I don't know uh, how much longer of a leash they'll have with Pesson. Samir Sharma heading down to the bullpen as well. I believe you said O'Leary is scheduled to be tomorrow's starter, if I wasn't mistaken. That's the rumor on the street here, Tom. So perhaps they'll go to Sharma before they go to O'Leary, but we'll have to see. Sharma's just guarding the bullpen right now for foul ball, so. I don't want to strike. Owen, two on Wilson. Or excuse me, Owen, one. Wind up and the pitch. That is hit in the air, foul just above the light pole, onto the street it goes. I guess you got to be careful when you're driving by this place. Absolutely. Or well, running across the street for a ball. Right. Bases loaded, no outs. The lineup and the pitch in the dirt. Nice job by Jewett diving in front of that one. That could have been a run or two. One and two, the count on Wilson. Kennedy Wilson having a pretty good day. An RBI double in the first inning. And reached on a fielder's choice in the third and scored the second run. And now hits this one into left field. That'll drop in for a base hit. One run is in. And the lead runner behind him held up at third. So Dobek scores. Ferrucci to third. Stone to second on the RBI single for Wilson. Still no outs in the inning. And it is now a 3-1 game. Sean Harney to step in. Ashley and playing in, gonna go for the force out at the plate. He can't afford to give up another run. That one low. Harney has had a good day on the mound as the pitcher and also a good day at the plate, two for two. A single in the first and an RBI double in the third, also has a stolen base to his credit. Infield is in as he hits this one up the left side. That'll get through into left field. One run is in. A second run being waved around. The throw in is cut off. And another pair scores for Natick. On the RBI single for Horney, the two RBI single. Wilson up to second. Ferrucci and Stone both score, and there's still no outs. Rally time for post 107. Tom, uh, one ten is... Uh American Legion teams begin practice. Uh, as soon as the high school season's over and they have uh, players available. We'll have tryouts usually the week before the 
regular season or a couple weeks before at the earliest. 1-0. It's different really for every program. Tryouts for Ashland, I believe, are the week before the season started this week. As that is up the middle, throw to third, and it's dropped by the third baseman. Everyone's safe. Throw a little bit off the mark, and Rossi could not reel that one in. Ended up falling, trying to keep it from getting away from him. And that saved a run, I think. The fact that he was able to at least hit it with his glove. So Joseph reaches. Wilson over to third, Harney up to second, bases loaded once again for Natick as Austin Twist, the second baseman, will step in. And I'm going to give the error to the pitcher on that one. That throw was a little bit off the mark. And tailing. Right. Didn't have his foot in the ground, solid. Line up and the pitch. And that is ball one. O'Leary's return from the pen with his warm ups. We'll see how long coach wants to give Mr. Pesson. Lefty awaits the pitch. Pesson deals. Down low. Two and O. Oh. The left-handed batter, uh, that runner on third is getting a very, very generous lead. If Jewett wants to pick down. He deals inside. From the stretch is Pesson, and he'll take some time. No outs in the inning so far for Natick, and this is their seventh batter of the inning. Leg lift and the pitch. Down low, there's a walk and another run for Natick. Wilson comes around to score. And that'll make the score six to one, Natick leading Ashland. Zach looked over to the dugout to see where the coach is gonna come and get him, but this inning sort of blew up on him. We got a pinch hitter, David Knox, stepping in for Aiden Medigan. Line up and the pitch to Knox, he'll take strike one. I like the first pitch curveball. They're expecting fastball all the time. Bases loaded for Ashlyn. Has that one outside, one and one. Already four runs in, in this inning. From the stretch is Pesson, he deals. Up the middle it goes, past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in as the ball continues to roll into center field. Another run comes around to score. And it is now an 8-1 lead, a two RBI base hit for Knox. That one took an awkward bounce in front of the shortstop and just got by his reach. And that is going to be it, I think, for Pesson. Harney and Joseph for the two run scores. Austin Twist moves up to third base. And that is going to be the day for Pesson. We'll have a new pitcher for post 77. And it will be Dylan O'Leary, the Hopkinton Hiller, who will come into the game and take over pitching duties. Still no outs in the inning for Natick. Six runs have scored. In this bottom of the fifth, we'll take a timeout with Natick leading Ashland eight to one. Continuing on with the bottom of the fifth, it's Ashland Legion Baseball on HCAM television in Hopkinton and WACA TV in Ashland. A big rally for Natick, still no outs, already six runs in in this inning. New pitcher is Dylan O'Leary. And he throws ball one to Colin Shalani, the ninth hitter in the lineup. Natick has batted around. That one fouled away to the Natick bullpen, or the Ashland bullpen, excuse me, one and one. Dylan nicknamed the Bean, some family thing. But Coach Steve Simos nicknamed him the Civ last night at the banquet. 
was a strike. First play all year down at third base. The Hillers had a great season this year. Went all the way to the sectional semifinals. The lineup and the pitch, a swinging strike there. And they had an extra innings loss against Greater New Bedford. And they call the hitter out. They say that, I think the uh, catcher caught that one. Ball tip. Ball tip, so they're gonna give him the out, one away. Dylan's first K of this young season. That brings up Jackson Dobeck, the center fielder who started off the inning reaching on an error. Two errors in this inning for Ashland and the runner from first taking off. The throw will not get there and it's a stolen base. David Knox steals second. Runners on second and third now. Line up and the pitch, swinging strike. This is Dylan's first inning of pitching all year. Did not throw an inning for the Hopkins and Hillers but played every game and every inning at third base for the green and orange. Upstairs it goes. Two and one count on Dobek. In the dirt, nicely covered by Jewett, three and one. Dylan, a accomplished goaltender, which you've had the pleasure of watching him. Very good goaltender. Swinging strike, and that'll fill up the count. There's another one, and this time that'll be out number two. So Larry racking up the Ks, and that'll bring up Max Ferrucci, the left fielder. Larry is going to be a senior next year. Lined up in the pitch. And who knows, maybe we'll see him pitching for the Hillers next year. They're gonna need some arms to take care of what they lost, so certainly he'll be in the mix. Leg lift in the pitch. That one outside, one that's, and one. That's the first breaking pitch he's thrown all year. Both runners leading. He deals, there's another strike, one and two. He's sort of imposing at six foot one on that eight inch mound. Swinging strike, and how about that? He faces three batters and strikes them all out to get the post 77 out of what was a big Natick rally. But Natick does plate six runs and it is eight to one as we head to the top of the sixth. Top half of the sixth inning, a big rally for Natick in the bottom of the fifth, six runs plated. And it is now an eight to one ball game as Ronan Bates steps in to face Sean Harney who's still out there up the right side, slow roller, it stops on the infield grass, the flip to first and they got him. Good play by Twist, getting the flip over to first base. And there is one away. Ashland could have used that uh, pitcher coverage on that play that was in no man's land. Jake Obid steps in. It's really the catcher's responsibility to yell out, get over, get over, get over. Because sometimes the pitchers are in a little little zone of their own. That one inside. So a pitcher should get over regardless of what's going on, if it's to the right side of the infield, if it's hit to the second baseman, or it hits to the first baseman and he goes and strays out a little bit further, just run over on a straight line to the bag. Obid awaits the pitch. 
He deals, and that hit him. So a 1 0 base runner. As Obid takes one for the team, he'll head to first. That'll bring up Ben Thomas. Coach Johnson heading over to talk to the Natick coach as the Natick coach comes up to talk to the umpire. I don't think there oh, was anything intentional at all about that. No, I don't think so. I think he's heading over to third base to base coach. Wind up and the pitch, swinging strike. Has Harney picked over this game at all? I don't think he has. I don't think so, not that I can recall. Pitch to Thomas in there for a strike. 0 and 2. With the hitters constantly being behind in the count, there's no real reason for the pitcher to deviate. Hits that one foul, and that one went right towards one of the native coaches. Ben Thomas out of Holliston High School, 5'11", 190 pounds, outfielder. Batted a 344 for the Holliston Panthers during the high school season. That one inside, played in 19 games, drove in 15 runs. Hit in the air, a high fly ball to shallow left field. The shortstop calls everyone off and makes the catch. Obid heads back to first. Two away, that'll bring up Brad Seymour, the center fielder. Seymour, another member of the Holliston Panthers baseball team. That was a good base running read by Obid. He went just a little less than halfway down. There's no sense in making a third out and the native catcher tried to back pick or faked a back pick, but didn't let it loose. Strike one there to see more. That one a called strike 0 and 2. The last thing Natick wants to do is to give Ashland any momentum and for the catcher is getting greedy with his back pick. That is hit in the air and that'll drop in for a base hit. And it is a two out single for Seymour as Obid will push up to second. And now Lewis Rossi, the third baseman, to step in. Sometimes these catchers fall in love with their own arms. And if he threw it past the first baseman, your runner could all end up at third base. Lewis Rossi out of Holliston High School hits that one foul up the left side. Natick first baseman not holding the runner on. 255 batting average during the high school season for Rossi. Scored 11 times. I think there's zero chance for a double steal here. Hits this one in the air, got a good piece over to left field and making the catch is Max Ferrucci. Had to really look for that one for a bit as that was sky high. And that will wrap up the top half of the sixth inning to the bottom of the inning we go. It is an eight to one Natick lead. Bottom of the sixth inning, Natick trying to add on to their eight to one lead. Due up is three, four, and five. Jacob Stone, the catcher, Kennedy Wilson, the third baseman, and Sean Harney, the pitcher, to face Dylan O'Leary, who came in in relief last inning and successfully ended a big rally for post 107. She ended up scoring six runs and racking up four hits. Couple of walks as well. Wind up and the pitch. Down low, 1-0. Oh. 
Still in pitching out of the stretch rather than full wind up. That one's hit foul into the backstop, one and one. Whatever works for you, kid. Full wind up or the stretch. All three times Stone has batted, he faced the starting pitcher, Zach Pess, and he walked, was hit by a pitch, scored a run, and flew out. That one outside. Little show me curveball. Pretty good turnout here at Mahan Field in Natick. That one outside and I'll make the count three and one. One of the things I look for in a catcher is whether they're willing to get down and block balls even when nobody's on, just for practice. That one low and the walk is drawn. That is the second time that Stone has reached via the walk, was also hit by a pitch. And that'll bring up Kennedy Wilson. Wilson having a very nice day at the plate. Two, four, three. Has a pair of RBIs and two runs scored. That one outside. There is warm up action for Natick, so perhaps we'll see a relief pitcher, runner taking off from first. The throw up is a little bit high, and it's a stolen base for Stone. That is the third stolen base, excuse me, uh, fourth stolen base of the evening for post 107. Somebody's got to keep that runner close. Nobody's doing it. Yeah, big lead off a of second now. So there's a strike. Should be the second baseman's responsibility with a righty up. Set to deliver, down low. One and two on Wilson. Jewett wanted to pull that ball up from six inches off the ground, but the umpire wasn't buying it. There's a strike. Jewett showing strong hands there, pulling the ball in just a little bit. The 2-2 pitch. Hit in the air, foul territory, and out of play. Into the road it goes. Dylan O'Leary not having pitched it all this year has not even uh, turned his head around to see how far that uh, base runner, now he does. Yeah, no one covering the second base bag at the moment. That one fouled away. thinks that runner's gonna get a jump, all he needs to do is step off the back of the rubber and become an infielder. Waits the sign and now deals. Upstairs, there's a walk. Second straight walk from O'Leary. That was a good battle by Wilson. And now Sean Harney, the pitcher, will step in, who's having a very nice day at the plate, three for three. Has three RBIs and a run scored and takes strike one there. That's a nice recovery pitch by Dillon. Walks the batter, comes back with a strike. And runner taking off from second, a swinging strike, throw to third, not in time. And that was huge speed by Stone, his second stolen base. And both of them coming in this inning and also heading over to second is Kennedy Wilson, who took advantage of the situation. So now you have two in scoring position with no outs. Little head turn there may have kept that runner close to second base. Looks at second and deals. And that one inside. But base runners like to pick up tendencies. Does he turn around twice? Does he turn around once before he goes to the plate? Smart brace burner will pick up those kinds of things. Upstairs it goes. Both runners leading. Up the middle, past the reach of the third baseman. Went off his glove into left field. One run is in. Second run right behind him. And it is 10 to 1. Natick leading. 
A two RBI base hit by Harney. He reaches second on the throw in. And that will bring up Noah Joseph. Still no outs in the inning. Jackson Horning uh, made a smart fielding play there. He saw third base abandoned and he ran over there quickly. But by that time, the ball wasn't cut off. They have a play over there. And there's a strike to Joseph. Joseph both for three, reached on an error last inning and scored a run. So the cardinal rule is to never abandon a base. Everybody has base responsibility. Tom Nappy, Larry Sacklad on the call. It's Ashland Legion Baseball and WACA TV in Ashland, or H. Cam and Hopkinton. That one upstairs. Todd Carter running the camera this evening. Two and a one is the count on the shortstop. Hits that one foul. Slices that above us, two and two. Nadick playing in their first game of the Legion season. It's 18 game season for zone five. Will be at Ashland Middle School tomorrow for the third game of the season for post 77 as that one takes a couple of hops and it's by the reach of the first baseman. A miscommunication there, run into score as well as it ended up in right field, and Joseph reaches on the error, third error of the game by post 77. Sean Harney scores, and it's 11-1 post 107 leading. Still no outs in the inning. Austin Twist steps in to the left-hander's batter's box. Wind up and the pitch. There's strike one. It was nice to see Dylan O'Leary just flash over to cover the bag. Had that play but being cleanly. There's another strike. Well, that was a tough play there by Bates and DePeron. One of them has to call the other off of that. And that was really DePeron's ball. Bates should have stayed at first. Check in at first. Runner slides back safe. Sometimes the first baseman thinks they can get to the ball and either dash to the bag or flip to the pitcher. Wind up and the pitch. And there's another called strike and that'll be the first out of this bottom of the sixth. Jewett jumped up as if he was gonna back pick the runner. Four strikeouts by Dylan O'Leary in this relief appearance. David Knox steps in. Checking at first, runner back safe. He's got quicker feet than I thought. Knox came into the game in the fifth inning to pinch hit and had a two RBI single as part of that six run rally. Takes a ball on the first pitch. Runner leading off of first. Down low, two and oh. He's getting a pretty good lead but Dylan's very quick to the plate. Set the deal. There's a strike. Checking at first, runner back safe. Ashland won their first game of the season yesterday, 10-0 against Hudson. Not looking so good today, however, as that one's fouled away. Two and two. Watching Ronan Bates' left foot there, he's opened that up a little bit. Which opens up his hip. Checking at first, runner back safe. So we can get that ball down the line that may go astray. If you close your foot off, it's very hard to cross over. He deals, and there's a strike, throw down, and the runner back safe, and that is the fifth strikeout for O'Leary. Colin Chalani to step in, the right fielder. 
two at looking for the strike him out, throw him out. Hits this one in the air over to right field, and it's caught by Thomas. And that is the third and final out of the bottom half of the sixth. Natick does plate another three runs and leads 11 to one as we head to the top of the seventh. Top of the seventh inning, an 11 to one lead for Natick post 107 over Ashland. Kevin Quinn will step in. He's pinch hitting for the second baseman, Trevor DePeron. Quinn is out of Holliston High School, five foot eight, 145 pounds. Set to be a senior next year. Seven, eight, and nine for post 77 as they are down to their final three outs. Wind up and the pitch. Check swing, held ball one. Quinn presents a little bit smaller strike zone. Dylan O'Leary getting ready on deck. Swinging strike there, one and one. Certainly a different look for this lefty. Drops down, with, throws the ball to a lower plane. It's this one in the air, and that'll drop in a right field. And it got past the dive of Chilani. Quinn is going to keep going to second base, and that is going to be a leadoff double for Quinn. Right fielder overplaying that one, and now Dylan O'Leary will step in. So Ashland going to try to make some noise. Trailing by 10 runs. And the lefty will swing for strike one. Line up and the pitch. Strike two. As he stares in at that one. Oh, and two. Is the fourth hit of the game for Ashland. The double by Kevin Quinn. Upstairs it goes. And Dylan O'Leary has come in in relief and done a nice job. The rally last inning was in large part due to a couple of stolen bases and an error as that is hit in the air over to left field. And that gets by the reach of the left fielder. Quinn, the lead runner, is going to be stopped at third. And it is second and third with no outs for post 77 as O'Leary gets in on the action with a double. A little confused by that base running play. I thought he would have easily and scored. And they just tagged Quinn to make sure that uh, he tagged up, and the umpire says he did, so everybody's safe. Well, there was no tag play. Right. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what they were doing there. Maybe they thought he missed second base. He was standing on second base. As Sean Jewett steps in. Oh, that's a mystery. Maybe trying to catch him sleeping. 1-0. Oh. Well, they asked for an appeal with the umpire, so we'll have to rewind the tape and see what happened. Hit in the air over to left field, and that'll get by the reach of the left fielder. One run is in, a second run behind him, and it is going to be an 11-3 ball game. A two RBI base hit by Sean Jewett advances the second on the throw in. Still no outs in the inning. And post 77 making some late noise, and we're gonna have a pinch hitter here. Jack Larsh from Holliston High School will step in. He's set to be a junior next year. That one inside almost hit him. Runner will head back to second. Line up and the pitch. 
And there's a ball inside. It is a new pitcher that came in this inning for Natick. Jake Jewett taking over for Sean Harney. He pitched a great game. But with a big lead, Natick choosing to go to the bullpen. Looked like a design play from the catcher to the shortstop, throwing down and through. Wind up and the pitch inside. Oh no, called a strike. Some of the base running coaches say that you should never, ever, ever get picked up at second base by the catcher. There's another called strike. 0-2. Sean Harney, the starting pitcher for Natick, went six innings, giving up three hits, one run. Swinging strike there, and there is out number one of this seventh inning. That'll bring up Ronan Bates, the first baseman, who's one for three today. First, we'll have time called by the shortstop for Natick. No, Joseph to talk to his pitcher. Some words of encouragement. Left fielder backed up about three steps. There's a strike. Bates has good power. Sean Harney, the starter, had two Ks for Natick. Pitcher stepped off the back of the rubber. Maybe he didn't like the feel. Jouet deals upstairs. Runner leading off of second. Quite a big lead there. That one inside. Sean Jouet over there at second base after his two RBI base hit. Upstairs. Full count now. Samir Sharma in the on deck circle. Four post 77. Looks like he'll pinch hit for the next hitter who was supposed to be Jake Oban there. Bates thought he had the walk. That's a called strike. And now it's the full count pitch. Big gap in left center field for Ronan. Fouls that one away. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit here at Mahan Field in Natick. Thunderstorms have stayed away for us. Time called. Bates adjusts a batting glove. And there was some interferences with the some of the MIAA softball and baseball semifinals games. Uh, whatever was going on over, I believe it was at Endicott. I think they had some thunderstorms in the area. Were they able to finish or did they have to They did finish. They had to uh, pick up at a later time, but they finished a little later than they wanted to, I think. We didn't run into any rain this season, did we? No, not at all. We didn't have any rain at all this spring. Just stayed away from Hopkinton altogether. I yeah. got a bridge to saw you in Brooklyn, I tell you. I would say most of the games this year got moved around. Probably about 85% of them. That is hit foul up the left side out of play. Ronan seems to have a lock on this pitcher. With a full count, he can't throw anything but a fastball. I doubt he's got enough confidence to throw a yakka right here in this count. There's something the pitcher doesn't like about that rubber. From the stretch, runner leading off of second. Bates continuing to battle, now will draw the wall. Good at bat there by Bates. Made Jouette throw quite a few pitches. 
Now Samir Sharma will step in out of Deerfield Academy, private school. Sharma set to be a senior next year out of the Ashland area. Takes that one up high. Jewett is starting to become an annoyance for the native catcher. He just wants to do something with the ball. And he can, being up this much. And there he goes. Runner taking off from second, a swinging strike to Sharma. Runners on the corners now for post 77. One out in the inning, two on, two already in. Post 77 trying to rally their way back. You recall Ronan Bates got involved on the front end of that uh, rundown, delayed steal, whatever you want to call it, earlier in the game. Checking at first, runner back safe. Timothy Ringy at a Holliston High School warming up on deck. The umpire looking closely at the lefty's feet to see if he breaks the plane of the rubber. That would be a balk. Pitcher deals. Foul tipped away. Runner will return to first as Bates immediately took off. That was an excuse me check swing. difficult to steal on a lefty but it can be done with enough practice you got to make sure that you see the pitcher's shoulder square up checking at first runner back safe congratulations to the Milford Scarlet Hawks softball team they defeated Newton North three to nothing they are advancing to the state finals in division one softball I find that impossible it's filed with a away. Two hundred million dollar high school edifice in Newton. From whence I came. It'll be Milford's first finals since two thousand thirteen. Pitcher looks over at first. There is warm up action as well for Natick in case. Jewett continues to struggle. Two and two now to Sharma. And he's taking long looks at both base runners. Takes a look at third now first. And checks in at first. Runner takes off. Throw to second. They have the runner in the pickle. The ball briefly dropped. And the second baseman will look at third. And now over to the first baseman. They'll let the run score. They get the second out. They give up the uh, run for the out. And I think that's pretty smart when it's this much of a lead. So Bates tagged out, and it's 11 to four now, but there is two outs. Sharma awaits the pitch. Outside it goes. Sharma, nine, 10, and 11 year old. Condor player for Ashland Little League. Wind up and the pitch. Swinging strike. And that is going to do it for the ball game. Natick Post 107 will grab the 11 to 4 victory over Ashland Post 77. And Natick wins their First game of the Legion season. Ashland falls to one and one overall. Post 77 won their first game on the road against Hudson 10 nothing, but lose here today by an 11 to four final. Certainly uh, not what you hoped for if you're Ashland Legion, but I think they uh, got a good amount of uh, lessons out of this game. Good learning experience, and they got some of those younger players in there, but it's still a long way to go in this very young Legion season. The final score, Natick defeats Ashland 11 to four. Natick scores 11 runs on nine hits, commits one error. Ashland scores four runs on three hits, committing three errors. 
Your winning pitcher is Sean Harney, who pitched six tremendous innings. The losing pitcher for post 77 is Zach Pesson, who pitched a relatively good game, but ended up struggling in the fifth. Natick rallied for six runs in the fifth inning and really never looked back after that as they'll take this one 11 to four as Natick post 107 improves to one and oh on the season. Ashland falls to one and one. For my broadcast partner, Larry Sacklad on camera it was Todd Carter. I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching this broadcast of Ashland Legion Baseball on WACA TV in Ashland or HCAM Television in Hopkinton. The final score for the final time. Natick Post 107 defeats Ashland Post 77, 11 to four. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, and we'll talk to you soon.